If Steven Soderbergh was gonna shoot a 3D printer horror film, he'd be using this kind of lighting. Welcome to Robot Factory. All right, I hope all of you had a merry and bright solstice season and a happy new year. Uh, we are into the year 2017, which means ahead for our good friend Rex, my next big objective, my next big goal is to get our girl walking. Now, getting the head moving, getting the jaw working, getting the voice recognition to operate, and getting Rex to talk back to us were all pretty significant feats for me, I'll be honest. The learning curve has been steep, let's say that. And the next real step in getting Rex to be a real grown-up robot is to make her mobile. With that in mind, I've started thinking about how to develop this hip section and the leg structures to move us forward. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to go ahead and have this hip section that I was just talking about. And at some point, this will all get done in Fusions 360 or something like that, if I can ever figure out how to do it. So the hip section is going to be where all the electronics, batteries, and servos are mounted. So coming off from the hip section, we're going to continue to have the neck. Okay, so happy Rex. Okay, so our hips are going to move up to the neck, which we've already established. We've got servo in the neck that gives us neck panning. We have jaw. Interestingly enough, Rex looks like a duck in this iteration for the simple reason that ducks are avian reptiles. Dinosaurs were the precursor to avian reptiles. The conspiracy is real. So, then we also have Rex's tail. At some point, I am thinking about going ahead and adding movement to both Rex's body into her neck, as well as her tail. The reality is, if we were looking at an actual T-Rex, the neck section itself would probably just be up here that we would get into neck, and the rest of this would just be large body structure. In our case, I've kind of been referring to that as the neck, even though it's the, the torso is realistically what I need to start calling it. So we have our torso section, we have our neck section, we have our head section, we have our tail section, and we have our pelvic section with our hips. The next piece that I'm going to be worrying about here is this pelvic section. And my thought right now is I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos in general to get a sense of how to do 3D printing, how to do modeling in Fusion 360, a whole bunch of different ideas. And one of the video channels that I've really found helpful is the X Robots channel. Um, James Brunton, uh, xrobots.co.uk. Uh, his site has been phenomenal. His builds are so interesting. Um, yeah, I just, I'm loving it and I'm learning a lot from it. So one of the things that I saw him doing in his Gonk Droid videos and in some of his other older Android videos is focusing on a, a parallelogram structure for the legs. So what I'm thinking for Rex is that we're going to use two servos, and I don't know if this is going to be the exact servo orientation or not, but right now the thought is that I'm going to have two servos in the pelvis, and that each of those servos are going to drive a leg of a parallelogram. So this is going to be a piece, this is going to be a piece, they're going to be connected here. We're then going to come down to what would be the knee level, and at the knee level, I'm going to have a 3D printed bracket. These are right now, I'm thinking, either going to be metal or 3D prints. I'm not sure which yet. Uh, I'm going back and forth. 
So they may be aluminum structural elements then with 3D prints bolted to them because what I want to accomplish is lightening up the mass some. Uh, right now we can already see that Rex is going to be getting really, really heavy. So what I'm thinking then is that I'm going to then have these two motors are going to drive the main sort of walking angle up to the knee. Then at this point there will be a motor on one side, a servo motor on each knee. The opposite side of the knee will just have a hinge. So this is realistically each side, uh, my artwork is terrible here, each side of this is four pieces, so a four piece truss. So if I were to draw it over here, um, we would have something like this with each of the elements being, sorry that was the cat knocking the camera, uh, each of these elements being either aluminum or 3D printed, uh, I'm not sure which, and then connected using plates so that you wind up with the side rails connected to one another, bridged top and bottom, and we wind up with these rigid structures. So this rigid structure here for the upper leg, I'm thinking probably will get two servo motors to <clears throat> handle the majority of the torque. Then what we have is a knee, the, the knee position, and this will then sit in a bracket. This servo is going to sit in a bracket where the other three pieces of structure are simply pivoting on, um, they're on pivots, they're on, they're on a pin, and, and pivot freely being tied together. Because this upper section is going to do the most of the heavy lifting of walking, this second uh, joint on the leg, the knee joint, is going to simply be trying to carry uh, the load through, but it's not going to have the same kind of degree of motion that I expect from the upper leg. So it shouldn't need as much servo, is what I'm thinking. And then we get down, because we have to remember that our T-Rex is actually a tow walker. So uh, the T-Rex does not walk on a, a flat foot. She walks essentially on a on a very upright gait. I like happy dinosaurs. Okay, so a very upright gait. So rather than so we have the knee joint and then we have a joint at essentially what would be the ankle, but it's really high up in comparison to say a human ankle or a dog or a cat. Uh, many quadrupeds uh, have a very different ankle assembly. Many other bipeds have a very different ankle assembly. And for whatever reason, if we look at the, 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 the skeletal structure of the T-Rex, what we find is that she or he was a toe walker. Well, this toe walking position, <clears throat> excuse me, this toe walking position is going to be, I think, a, a really difficult one to make happen initially. It's going to be, I don't want to say a bridge too far, but I think it's a tough initial position to get from a balancing standpoint as well as a structural standpoint. So while it is moving us uh, slowly in the direction of the actual T-Rex creature, what I'm going to start with is a little bit more of a flat foot assembly. While that's not what we would expect to see, I think it's going to offer us the opportunity to test bed some of these ideas and, and try them out a little bit more to be sure that we can continue to move forward. So the thought is then, a each side is going to have four servos. There's going to be a servo at the S1, S2, S3, S4, right, 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 right. So 
Each side will have four servos. Two servos in the hip joints, one servo in the knee, one servo sort of high up in the ankle to help maintain this direction of movement, right? So we have a knee assembly that's doing this direction of movement, the ankle doing this one, and then this ankle joint right down at the floor is simply gonna be a passive ankle joint of some sort. And what I'm thinking here is that I'm just gonna build sort of a, an anatomical structure for the foot. Not sure exactly what that's gonna look like yet, but it's gonna be pins floating in a bracket. Uh, may get some kind of structural element here, maybe like an RC shock absorber kind of thing to keep the, the ankle from rocking too much, but the idea is to give the foot a little bit of adaptive positioning. So what I've done is started to tinker and fumble the Robit Factory way, tinker and fumble to figure out how to create some 3D printed parts to start testing. So what I've got here, this assembly is designed to be a servo bracket. So they've got a, a, a center section to allow the bracket to pass through and then some screw holes for us to use screws to bolt our servo to so that the servos can come in and out. And then these 3D elements will then be printed in ABS and I'll do some type of chemical bonding using acetone to other 3D components that will then be able to be positioned on our leg structure. So what we are going to do is we are now going to print our bracket and we will see how that goes. Contact. I'm starting to think this is gonna be a real waste of plastic. I don't know if it looks any better in focus. All right, so as you can see, whoop, printed this with a pretty wide brim around the part itself. And the idea behind that brim, I am given to understand, is that it will help lead to better surface adhesion overall. Because you prime the extruder and you start with this little bit of plastic that goes around the outside. And then what you wind up with when printing an ABS, reasonably strong, reasonably smooth part. And there's all kinds of things that you can do to, to see about smoothing things out, cleaning things up using acetone and stuff like that. But I'm going to be honest, for a part that I designed in Fusion and printed on a 3D printer that I built, I'm not upset. Of course, we got to see whether or not it fits the servo. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. All right, let's see if it'll go on from the top. Maybe I planted, no, not a bit. Okay, well, the screw holes actually line up pretty well. I, again, I know this focus is kind of terrible, I'm sorry, but there we go. Uh, the screw holes line up reasonably well. And I'm going to say that what we need is maybe, maybe another half a millimeter, maybe even a millimeter's worth of opening. Okay, so that's three millimeters thick. And as you can see from that curl, it's definitely got some warpage, even at three millimeters. But I think, I think I'm going to have to go at least five millimeters in thickness because this is supposed to be a supporting structure and that's not going to support anything even remotely with any kind of strength and then i think i'm going to go ahead and make the bracket itself maybe another two millimeters larger on the uh on the sides of the servo to give it a little bit more rigidity so a little bit of redesign here but this kind of thing i'm hoping is gonna get us moving forward with getting Rex walking 
and it's certainly going to open up our opportunities for doing some stuff with robot builds in general. So, interestingly enough, using a $250 import printer and uh, creating a part for a dinosaur out of old dead dinosaurs, oh the irony, uh, we wound up with not too bad a result. I thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Your your praise is your praise is undeserved. But as always, like, subscribe, please share, comment, have a joke, have a laugh, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.